Hello there, thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and as you can see, the godfather of soul and the hardest working man in showbiz. That's right, at what I consider to be the end of his pure soul era before he became funkified. Now, of course, music's all a matter of, you know, personal taste, and for me, the James Brown I love the most is like Try Me in the 1950s. And naturally, being a baby boomer, I also love it's a man's 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 world, and Papa's got a brand new bag. But, you know, once he moved into the say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud, and sex machine and stuff, I drop off a bit. So, for that reason, plus design reasons, plus collectability and scarcity, I consider this to be the last of the great James Brown concert posters of the 1960s. Certainly of the tour blanks, not looking at all the one-off posters out there. Because, you know, one of the reasons, right after this, the next tour blank for James that went into use was this. And you're certainly familiar with this. It's, um, you know, j just as a matter of opinion, it's just a bit lackluster for me. You know, it's James in a bow tie, you know, I don't know, channeling Michael Jackson in the future or something. And uh, it's also ubiquitous, you know, it's just sort of everywhere. And I love rarity as part of collecting. This uh, was used from, what, mid-1967 to early 1969 and appeared in both the purple you see here and in green colors. But for me, you know, this thing is both special looking and it's scarce, so it really makes a fun collector's item. Yellow and purple, boy, they just go great together and they sing together, I'll tell you. And then right there in the middle, you've got James's big, smiling face, dead center on the poster. Beautiful. And then you've got a killer hit under his name, I Got You, I Feel Good, biggest pop hit of his career, number three in 1965. And you've got one of his four famous nicknames on there, Mr. Dynamite. Now, among the other song titles, it does have a couple of R&B only hits, Don't Be a Dropout was number four R&B, and uh, Money Won't Change You was number 11. It's kind of funny, I have to admit, when I first saw this poster, I thought Don't Be a Dropout was a PSA, a <laughs> public service announcement. Um, again, if you're a baby boomer, you might recall the Beatles' she, Love you, she Loves You single on Swan Records said Don't Drop Out on the label. So, you know, I thought it was just part of that campaign. And then on the poster, you do have, in the black box there, next to James, The Famous Flames. And then you've got Butterbeans and Dixie. Well, they were a comedy act, formerly Butterbeans and Susie, until Susie died. And then Butterbeans, for heaven's sake, the male half, he carried on because he had been in show business for 50 years. Well, wow. holy cats. And look at that, typical for a James poster, Go Go Dancing Girls. How fun. And then you've got three musicians along the bottom, and uh, two of them, not necessarily any great shakes, but boy, Bobby Bird, he's everything. If you saw the 2014 theatrical movie, Bobby Bird, of course, founded the Famous Flames back in 1955, before James even joined them. And then uh, Bird stayed with James pretty much forever, and is even credited with discovering James Brown. So this is a jumbo window card made of cardboard made by Globe Posters out of Baltimore, Maryland, and as I said, a tour blank, so they're first printed with the white area up top, totally blank. And this one is for the Tucson Sports Arena in Arizona, as you can see right there, and it says show and dance at the top, Sunday, February 5th, and then it's kind of funny under the Sunday there, the way it just drops off the edge, it just says 8.30 p.m. until. Okay, until what? I don't know, but until the show is over, that's when. Advanced admission, we have on there $3.50 and at the door $4. And then there's four ticket locations given in fine print, two record stores, a Woolworths, and a haberdashery. Wow, talk about an outdated term, right? Boy, a haberdashery, that of course was a men's outfitter that also sold sewing supplies. And an important line on most James posters from the 60s, right there you can see above his name, this is a show for the entire family. So now, this is where the fun really comes in. I often have pictures to show you other examples of a tour blank, but I'm lucky enough and privileged enough to be able to have a couple of more real ones to show you from the exact same month. So let's go ahead and get to those. One week later, Sunday, February 12th, it even says Lincoln's birthday on there, 
Oakland Auditorium. With a very simple and uncluttered venue box in this case, tickets $3, $4, and $5. And for the third poster, let's go ahead and jump ahead two weeks. Saturday, February 25th at Eagles Ballroom in Seattle, Washington. And advance tickets $4. Now that's interesting, just one price. And on sale at Bon Marsh and Vivian's Travel. And then down at the bottom, not surprisingly, you do have that simple credit in the white margin, Globe Poster, Baltimore. So, this is a tour blank with three different examples, not just within one year, but within one month of each other, as you just saw. So, needless to say, the color portion is all identical for the three, right? Well, not exactly, you know? Not exactly. Now, I'm going to point out a couple of subtle differences here. And, you know, you might think to yourself that's a bit nitpicky and everything, but it's really a good lesson and sort of a window into the process of how these tour blanks were made and a real head-scratcher, okay? So here we go. Notice the two song titles under James Crawford and Bobby Bird, okay? Simple. You've got Honest I Do and Oh What a Night in the yellow area. And, naturally, as song titles, those two songs are in quotes on either side, right? Well, let's take a look at the Oakland poster. Okay, here's the Oakland poster. And take a look at those two song titles. Both songs are missing the closing quotation marks. Isn't that interesting? They have the first quote marks only for both songs. Now for another anomaly, take a look at that purple box which features the jewels. You see that? And see how my song starts under the word, the? So back here on the Seattle poster with the jewels, do notice you've now got the little star under the in that purple box. And the two songs have been shifted to the right. So, uh, boy, you know, from a typesetter standpoint and a poster design standpoint, that's a real head-scratcher, you know? They're, they're small differences, but how does this happen? Not a tour blank where you just, you know, you imagine one big giant stack of these being made and then used throughout. But if I had to take an educated guess, I would say that, you know, the poster was designed and the first run of blanks were printed, and then somebody noticed the uh, quotation marks were missing at the end of those two songs. So I doubt if they would throw away everything they'd already printed with all that color and everything for such a small mistake. So for the second run, the typesetter added those missing quotes, and while they were at it, they might have thought, hmm, I think I'll center those two songs by the jewels a little bit better. So, you know, and then on the finished product here, after the venue boxes are filled in, as for why Oakland has the goof and Tucson and Seattle don't, it would be sort of silly for us to, you know, speculate from this point on how things got shuffled around and warehoused and thrown away and everything. I mean, it literally could run the scenario from, you know, that poster being the only one missing the quote marks, or 50% of them, or 99% of them could have been missing the quote marks. It's just really hard to say. And it's fun. It's fun to guess and speculate how this stuff happened. James Brown in the winter of 1966-67. Great fun killer window cards, fun anomalies, and all. Thanks a lot for dropping by. It's been fun, <laughs> and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again for something soon. Bye-bye.